greatest voiceover the nations where a perfect God is at work doing perfect things perfect ways with perfect results in you. Lord bless you today as you join me and continue to join me throughout these days and months and years. God bless you for doing so. I am enjoying hearing from you. There's a lot going on. We are very active and very busy and laboring for you. Now, today, praise be to God. Uh, what I want you to do, what I want you to do is to know that, uh, before I forget to tell you, that uh, there are some things that will be appearing on our website, BethanyCovenantAlive.net. Those things will be uh, supportive of the, uh, the voice over the nations. Maybe I'll have a a chart and maybe it is a little bit lengthy it's extensive but for sure it will be on the website that's what i mean so uh you go to you listen to the the otm and then you go to the website and see what's there it's very active we have some new things on there a prayer advantage which some folks ask we want to know more about claim so we're doing some things on that Praise the Lord, God bless you. In Jesus' name, I'm so, so, so we're going to go on with the God and fight for you. And I told you last time that it was essential, it was essential to hear the voice of God in your ear. One thing, I realize that when God speaks to an individual, sometimes and most times, no one else hears that's for a reason so it is not advisable for you to be speaking out what god tells you all the time you could be talking to your enemy that's happened, happened to us so i'm saying to you the voice of god giving you strategic instructions is essential, especially at times like this. Now, we have, as promised, some word on the ways in which God speaks. Now, hearing the voice of God has a lot to do with your disposition concerning many things, which we're going to talk about. You just don't hear the voice of God because, you know, it would be nice. No, some conditions apply. And so you have to understand that this is a sovereign God who wants to have a relationship with you, wants to talk with you. You got to expect to hear from him, but you really, really have to apply some discipline in some areas. Amen. To God be the glory. And so I want to pray for you. Amen. I want to pray that you are led into a relationship and a relationship in which you hear God. It, 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 the relationships are not one way, uh, you know, exercises. They're not one way things or one way streets. Somebody talks, somebody answers. Somebody talks, somebody does. That's relationship. Amen. And so God wants relationship with you and said praise the lord hallelujah and so today let me pray for you praise god praise god father today we are aware we are aware that we need direction oh how we need direction we need direction instruction and that we need to be expect to be led by your spirit we are reminded that we were created to hear and follow your voice. And that we are asking this day to restore us, to communicate once again with you. That is a whole lot of stuff in between. Now, many have been deceived and led out of their divine rights and their destinies. 
Well, that's because they didn't hear the voice of God. What they heard, other voices. So, Father, today in this we see revival of understanding of what your will is. We want to know what your will is. We can only do that if we hear from the people. And in much prayer and supplication then, Father, Father, we ask for revelation as we commit to obedience and cease from every form of rebellion and self-righteousness. So be it. So I wanna I wanna tell you just for the the value of telling you is that um uh, uh, many churches that are in a, a fasting position and this uh, this time is not really like just uh, everybody fast in January uh, no no this is a uh, as I heard in my house sat the latest down the Surreal gift. It's also on the website. You can go there and check that out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now. I'm going to because this word is so compelling, and yet this word you might know very well. It is compelling. It's a lot of story. But I may point out some things to you that, well, you might have missed or you didn't have any need to know it at that time. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Moses and his call to ministry. I'm going to talk to you quite a little bit about Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2 to 18. Now, this begins my discourse direct divine intervention not by swallows flying or birds telling a story or no 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 wait a minute direct divine intervention many of you during these series might have not realized that you had one but when the spirit of the lord is speaking you will come and say, wait a minute I just missed this. I just missed that. This happened. Exactly. How come I was not there when that happened? I went into this. And uh, it's uh, a crisis looming on the horizon. God is about to solve a problem. What? He has to call somebody in the earth to stand in the gap and get them to listen. Hallelujah. So there's crisis. And Moses is compelled to listen to God. Here is what happened if you don't know what happened. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 to 18, here. The angel of the Lord appeared for angelic intervention. Oh, the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in flames of fire from within a book. How many times during the old covenant days has God appeared in fire to speak? Hallelujah. And Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn. So this was mysterious. You know, God stirred up his fancy. 
He was a man who spent time outside with sheep. So, you know, not maybe a lot didn't surprise Moses out in the wild. But this situation with bush burning, but not to consume, got his attention. And so he went over to take a look. How many times does God have to get your attention by taking you off your path, leading you around the situation, and then speaking to you? I want you to think on this. And then God said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here I am. And because of the burning bush, because of the extent of the power of God, the glory of God in the situation, God said to Moses, take off your sandals, for where you are standing is holy ground. Don't come too close. Then God introduces himself as the father of Abraham and Isaac, the father of Jacob of the tribes of Israel. The Lord said, here's the crisis and here's the situation. I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. Now, may I ask you something? I spoke to somebody this weekend. I called them of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit probably a year within the time of COVID beginning. And she said, oh my God. Oh my goodness. She went on. Said, what happened? I was in the house doing this, pouring oil, pouring out to God, crying out for help. And here you are. Somebody, God heard her. And he sent an apostle to answer the call. And I began to tell her what she needed to do. And God said, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. And I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So guess what? I am making direct intervention into this situation, and this is about to stop. Oh, praise God, somebody ought to clap their hands. This is about to stop. Now Moses did not realize what he was signing up for. <laughs> when he found out, he began to back away. Ah, I can't speak. But it was too late, right? He was already in the fire without his saddles. Thanks be to God. I want God to draw you closer. I want him to do something. Hallelujah for you. <laughs> so I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Praise be to God. Now, those will be a prosperous telling me an old story. No, not telling you an old story. As many people as they are on the planet, there is a Red Sea crossing for every one of you. Now, I want to teach you how to recognize the Red Sea crossing because there's some Red Sea rules. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Certain conditions apply. And so Moses is signing up for a confrontation with all of Egypt. Pharaoh, his old stepfather or thereabouts, yes, he grew up in his house. And so uh, the most incredible situation is about to happen. What God spoke into Moses. And what I believe, saints, what I believe is when you hear the voice of God, it is not like a carnal person saying to you and you say, I forget. There's not one thing that the Holy Spirit has spoken into my spirit that I have forgotten. Overnight, last week, what did you say? I got it. It's something. It bypasses your natural senses and goes right into your, God, into your spirit. 
because that's where God owns the real estate. God, and so Moses' destiny is interrupted for the better. Ah, somebody is going to go down in history. Somebody is going to light up because God is going to make sure you hear his voice because there's a crisis and the problem has to be fixed and he's given you the skills but you don't know you have the skills. If he doesn't set you up in the problem with the situation and the challenges, you will never find out what you can do. Oh God, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you. Oh goodness, sir. And so, I want to lead you into a place where I have given you. There's some strange folks in there, but I have already taken care of them. Would you believe that if God calls you and sends you and equips you, that he has already taken care of the foes. I thank God the foes. It's not just any voice, folks. God has something going on. Big time for you. And so today, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, man of God. And so today, I want to, oh, hallelujah, get along with this. Today, we want to talk about shutting down the tumultuous noises in the atmosphere so that you can hear God. And we have found our place uh, and our minds in a place of uh, uh, noise, just noise, uh, noise everywhere. But uh, I can tell you because people are, are never off the media. Well, they're never off the media all night. But we want clear truth, which will refocus our attention. We want clear truth. Uh, and, and then we want, to, we want to hear the voice of the Father because we know that is where the truth is. And so, praise God. When the voice of the Lord is heard sometimes. The voice of the Lord heard in desperate situations. Pretty much like, like now, desperate situations. But, but hear something. At the center of your spirit, be calm. Because I'm telling you something. God has a way of getting through the noise. So, I asked you then last time. If the just must live by faith, will faith work in perilous times? Will faith work in times like these? Well, I have always known that faith is the believer's greatest asset. You cannot outdo faith. Hallelujah. Well, even if you didn't answer me, whether faith was the greatest asset you have. And even if you didn't know and you said yes, I will take that as faith. How is that? Praise God. And so, today, and perhaps onward, into the series, we want to assure you, not just God, we want to assure you that your Father has heard your desperate cry for help. There is a God who will go to war on your behalf direct divine intervention. So then we will be looking at the problem from a different perspective. This God that I preach about cannot only search out and rescue, but he can search out and recover. You know, there's two stages in a crisis, right? So there's one when they think you're still alive. But then there's one when they give that home and think you're dead. But let me tell you something. Even if it's a search and a rescue or a search and recovery, God has got this. Minister God got this. Hallelujah. I want you to lose your faith in here. Lose your faith. God has got this. In a moment, in a moment, in fire, water, starvation, gunfire, he wants you to develop the faith and the skill to turn off the noise and switch on to where your help comes from. It is easy. There will be an answer because you believe that God is there and he can and will help. Today, right now, 
Let's get ready to connect, reconnect, and communicate with your father. You need to hear his voice once again. And even so, even so, more than ever, you need to hear his voice. Praise be to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. I want to deliver on my promise. I'm going to deliver on my promise. You must hear the voice. But I have prayed that the Holy Spirit, who draws us to the Father, will continue to do so. He will draw you to the Father because, just like Moses was drawn to the Father, for this great sight, the Holy Spirit in our time, in our time of coming, is still drawing you to the Father. It is said in the book of John 6 and 44 that uh, it is the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God. Man of God, Jesus said, Hello. You don't think that one day you got up and you were desperate and you ran to God. Maybe you would have run the other way, but here is a thing. John 6 and 44 says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. Then I would raise them up at the last day, file that one in Jesus. So that you are drawn by the Spirit of the Father to the Son, that you may be saved and come into a relationship. And let me declare that now, that you, hallelujah, won't be having this conversation with me unless you were drawn to the Father. You say the whole the same Holy Spirit with which you are sealed brought you back to the Father so that we could have this conversation. Praise be to God. Let the relationship continue. It is about the voice, folks. It is about the voice. Praise be to God. Shalom, Abbas. Remember that you were created to have relationship with the Father and that you were created to hear his voice. It has been shut down, shut off. But the Spirit of the Lord is about to reopen it. Why you can't hear? Why then can you not expect to hear? I want you to expect to hear. Hallelujah. Father, not everyone who is quiet. Wait a minute. I told you that you need to be quiet. I need to shut down the noise, etc. But not everyone who is quiet is going to hear from God. There's some quiet people planning some things that you don't even want to imagine what they're planning. And there's some people who are very aloof. They are not humble. You think they're quiet and they're reserved. No, they're proud and they're aloof. They don't want to talk to you. You tell the truth and so in the name of Jesus Christ. But you who want to be led forth by the good shepherd, ah, you must have the right agenda the right attitude of spirit and so then you let me ask you this when you have this right attitude and this right agenda how do you approach things of god how do you approach the word of god how do you ask do you have worship with the father not somebody singing in church how do you adore the Father? How do you stay focused on the Father? How many times are you drawn to a prayer, even if you're not thinking you're not good? How many times are you ready? Because God is ready to expose some things. He is shut out for you. You will not know what is happening around you unless you can hear the voice of God. And so, God, let me see, see, wait a minute, let me tell you, even Christians, even non-Christians, non-believers know this, that there is a place in your spirit that belongs to God and God alone. 
nobody connects with you there. And so that is where you hear the quiet voice. That's what you hear. And so we give God praise today because He is El Gabor. Hallelujah. And He has reserved the praise of this. Because that's your yes. Press in. Press in. Hallelujah. I'll be back to pray for you in a bit. Because I want to tell you, he's still perfect. He's still perfect. And this perfect one is still perfect. Doing things in the perfect ways. The perfect steps. Yes. Oh, this is going to lead somewhere for us. Oh, this voice that nobody hears but him. I'm going to tell you some more. I'll be back in a minute. Amen. Amen. Bring new birth and the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory. Folks, that is uh, the opening treaties on direct intervention. That was direct divine intervention. Let me tell you, there is no time for any other kind of intervention. It is a now or never situation. But I want you to expect to have this interaction with the Father. Your life is going to shift. It is very easy to shift away from the noise. You don't know it. But all you have to do is to turn to the Father. Begin to think of this awesome God. And uh, come out of the noise anywhere that you are. Think of the source. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have any money, no groceries, no thing. What is this? What is this? I can't get to the store. Shift to the source. I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm Rafa. I can heal this. I can fix it. That's what you need to do. In a second, take your attention off the problem. Put it on God. Take your attention off the problem. Put it on God. It works. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so today I want to tell you this, that um, I'm going to ask God in the name of Jesus that however he gets your attention, that he gets your attention, that he shuts down the noise of anxiety in the name of Jesus Christ, even of sorrowing because you might have lost some friends. You might have been, oh God, are we ever losing? But I tell you something, in the name of Jesus Christ, Right. God, if you are here listening to me, God has sent you into my path and my he sent me to you so that I can tell you how to hear the voice of God. Whether it's in dreams, whether it's audible, whether it's silent, whether it's in the belly of a fish, it doesn't matter. Whether it's by discernment, interpretation, which we're going to talk about all these things because they are magnificent ways of hearing from God in the name of Jesus Christ. We can thank today for a miraculous recovery from whatever situation we're in. Whether it's Red Sea, it doesn't matter. Whether it's coming out of the lion's den, it doesn't matter. God will send a messenger ahead of himself. The Lord bless you. And I'm asking you, please head to the website and do respond in some way in Jesus name and don't forget we're going to be doing some magnificent things which I'll share with you later you are always welcome to send us a gift a donation so that we can help to take care of those things that are on God's mind amen to God be the glory and I will see you next time amen you can reach Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart via email at breakthrough at BethesdaMiracle.com, on her website at BethanyCovenantAlive.net, use the contact us, on Facebook at Apostle.dr.stewart.
Voice Over the Nations TV ministry is on the MFTN network. That's Missions for the Nations every day at 4.30 p.m. It's on YouTube every Sunday at 5 p.m. Search under Voice Over the Nations. It's also on Facebook on the Fire of Jesus Christ Ministries. New episodes are released every Wednesday. Thereafter, it's available on the Bethany Covenant Alive.net website. Donate. If you are in agreement with what the Apostle is doing, sow into her ministry and become a partner. Use the donate link on the Bethany Covenant Alive.net website. Prayer requests are available on the Bethany Covenant Alive.net website. Put the Apostle to work for you. Share your prayer requests. She will pray for you and into your situations. Service. See the Apostle live in action, preaching the now word of God every Sabbath. That's Saturday from noon till 3 p.m. Use the contact us to find out how you can join us virtually on Zoom. Donate. You are in agreement with helping the Apostle to take her ministry to the nations. Become a partner. Use the donate link on the Bethany Covenant Alive.net website. Yo.